guys, everyone. It's B. Today, I'm going to show you our apartment near Boston, Massachusetts. Then, we will find a corner to set up my art studio together. Finally, I will show you how I make this beautiful watercolor painting inspired by red roses. Welcome everyone to our new apartment. This is our little kitchen with a tiny kitchen sink. Everything here is little but it's good enough for the both of us. And that is a dining table slash working table for Ryan and me. Ta-da-da! -da. Here, the room. Let's open the window shaders. Let some more light in here. This is our favorite thing about this apartment is the giant windows everywhere so it gives a lot of natural sunlight in the room pretty good for drawing and here pretty good side closets and here the last room a pretty good side bathroom with giant windows again it's so nice of the view and that's pretty much it that is our small apartment and we're gonna be here in the next five weeks Now I'm going to show you what I have in my art toes. An easel that we bought at the thrift store for $5. Pretty cheap, right? My watercolor brush collection and my favorite art books that I carry around with me. I really want to sitting here and flipping through these books together. But we need to come back to setting up stuff. Let's prepare some red shades watercolor paint to for the painting later. After visiting the Rose Garden in Schenectady, New York, I got so inspired. I went home and did a bunch of paintings inspired by red roses. 
this is one of them, and you will see the rest when I hang these up on the wall. If you haven't seen the video yet, check it out guys. I'll link it up here. And now we're going to hang in all of this pretty painting on the walls. I'm so excited! What are you doing? Do you have the roses for me? It doesn't look that great. That's okay. It looked pretty okay. Part 1. Pencil Sketch I like to begin my initial sketch with an erasable red color pencil. Then, sometime, go over it with a black graphite pencil if I'm not happy with it yet. By doing sketches that way, I will let my ideas flow freely on the canvas because I can easily differentiate my brainstorming and my final line words. With watercolor, the red sketch tend to blend well with everything I paint, so I usually do the underdrawing all in red. It's very important to check the final sketch before starting to apply watercolor. By looking at the image of a drawing in the mirror, errors can be spotted easily from the early state of a painting. Part 2. Preparation I usually wet my watercolor on the palette an hour before I paint by spraying it with clean water. If I need to mix a large amount of certain color, I just use paint straight from the tube because it's easier to mix that way. Part 3. Applying Watercolor We will use wet-on-wet -wet technique first. It's mean to apply wet paint colors on wet paper or on a wet wash. Let's start off by mixing a generous amount of base color, then wetting the paper thoroughly. And when the paper is still wet, we apply paint to create beautiful fleece and blooms. The watercolor will spread and blend to create soft, faded edges for your painting. With this method, 
The pain sometimes seems to be more in control of your work than you are. However, don't get discouraged. Let watercolor do its magic. The result often turn out really beautiful. Wet on wet is the most excited and challenging watercolor technique for me. It is my favorite one. Now we will use wet on dry technique. Wet on dry means to apply wet paint on a dry surface. This dry surface could be dry paper or layers of dried paint. Wet on dry technique tend to give you more control over your brush strokes and painted area. By layering watercolors, it brings contrast, depth, and details to your painting. Keep in mind, watercolor will be lighter when it dry, so be careful with how much water to add in your color mixture. Sometimes I think I got the right color and value down, but then when the paint is dry, it get lighter. So the final result is not what I anticipated it to be. That can be frustrated. So, learning to be familiar with how the paints look when it is wet and dry is a must, and practicing more, so we will get better at predicting how the watercolor painting looks like when it completes. However, there will always be surprises along the way. That is the unique and true natures of watercolor. So, trust the process. And keep painting. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any question in the comments below. See you in the next video.